Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, hello everyone, welcome to SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. We are live here in Las Vegas for HP Discover 2015. I'm John Furrier. My co-host Dave Vellante, our next guest is Jason Newton, Senior Director of Marketing for HP Enterprise. Welcome to, back to theCUBE, great to see you. Hey, thanks guys, it's been a long you, time. We are just talking about it. <laughs> Four years ago, I, I, you know, I was with you guys. So the yeah. new style of business, the transformation, it's really super exciting. We get to do theCUBE interviews all around with uh, different shows, different yeah. industry events. Uh, we were just at the OpenStack with the cloud, which is now getting so much legs. The mobile side's really, just so obvious, it's so game changed going back to 2007. Everyone's connected, and then, so this transformation message is huge. So we're, what's your thoughts on that? And take us through the high level of what's happening around transformation within HP. Well, I mean, you know, we've been hearing it loud and clear from our customers for a while that um, you know, they, they really want a different approach. They want a different kind of HP to come at them and, and not through silos and products and speeds and fees and technologies and you know I mean it's it's overwhelming and, and loud and clear that we need to do something different and when you talk to them you know there's a uh, most of the traditional enterprises and that's let's be honest I mean that's where our strength is we've helped build a lot of you know empires and enterprises over the years um, we've helped our, our expertise has always been in getting the most out of your application and out of your data we don't necessarily sell the app or whatever we help you we might help you develop it but our expertise is building the infrastructure and the operations to get the most value out of it. And uh, with the world that we're in, it's, it's this digital era and what Meg is going to refer to as the, uh, the idea economy, tremendous amount of transformation that's going on. Um, the, the speed at which uh, this transformation is happening and everybody recognizes now it's disrupt or be disrupted. Yeah. And, uh, and they're looking for someone that can be that transformation partner to build that bridge from where they are today to where they know they need to get to in terms of um, a new breed of applications, harnessing a new breed of data, delivering a new style set of experiences, um, and uh, and dealing with uh, an increasingly complex threat landscape. So her keynote's coming up later today, so she's this idea economy, you kind of gave a little teaser there, showed a little love yeah. there on what, what's kind of a little preview, I guess, idea economy. But to me, that springs to mind this whole agile. You know, if you look at the major transformation you know, enablers, you know, cloud, mobile, social, big data, these are the kind of trends out there. The enabler's been this agile concept, which has been more of a developer thing, but you guys talk about customers. Idea economy is not just like everyone's got a good idea, there's execution involved. So, you know, is that kind of the recognition that HP has that? Well, yeah, I think there's two things about the idea economy. I think one, is, yeah, you're right. Um, I mean, listen, ideas have fueled business forever, right? I mean, a great idea, Microsoft had a great idea at one point, or Bill Gates had a great idea at one point. Steve Jobs had a great idea at one point. Um, I think when we talk about the idea economy today, yeah. What makes it different is the fact that is the access to technology, resources, capital, are, are the barriers to, to the access to those are lower than they've ever been. Um, the ability for a few guys, a couple of developers to get together and, and, and take an idea into an outcome, into value, into a product, into a service, um, has never been easier to do. And so um, when everybody's got the same access to capital, to uh, expertise, to technology, um, you know, I can get out a credit card and I can spin up whatever I want on a cloud. The only thing left is time. So um, time is that differentiator. Uh, time to value is the number one priority. Uh, it's, and that's the enemy. So, um, you know, it's a great opportunity for enterprises, but they've got to know that uh, the, the, the uh, playing field is now leveled and, uh, you know, smaller competitors, or maybe even competitors they've never even heard of, right, can come in and, and, and radically uh, disrupt the industry. So. Um, Agile, or in fact, we're, we're doing a, a big area uh, on DevOps, um, trying to help traditional enterprises modernize their operations and not just empower developers, but yeah. the whole application lifecycle of development. How can we radically accelerate operations to you know, deliver a more productive, high quality environment? So we talk about this all the time on theCUBE, and I wonder if you could to spend some, a little more, more time on this, Jason. This idea that you've got this infrastructure, the barriers to entry of starting a business are largely limited by your ideas, yeah. right? Um, you're building on top of this digital fabric uh, yeah. and you're bringing different technologies together, hardware, software, mobile, social, all kinds of you know, cloud. So what's HP's role 
in that. I wonder if you could talk about that. So how should we think about HP going forward in this digital economy? The, the, the resources that you bring to bear, how you're transforming uh, your customers' organizations? Well, like I said, I, you know, every, every enterprise that's in business today has you know, legacy applications, meaning every application that's running in their data center I'll call legacy, right? Doesn't necessarily mean old, it just means that's what they have today and that's what they run their business on and that's what's core. But they know there's a new breed of applications that are out there that are going to be fueling the way they do business. And it could be the way that, um, um, you know, the way they're making money is radically transforming. And what these customers are looking for is, I need, I need to build a bridge from where I'm at today. I need to someone that understands the challenges and things that I've got going on today, those apps and, and that data but how to bridge and build that integration point, right, with where I need to get to. It's a whole new class of, of applications that maybe I don't have the skill sets to understand. I don't, I've never really built an environment for them. Um, I recognize that those apps might be consumed as services or they might be hosted, um, you know, in a public cloud. How do I sort of orchestrate all of that integrated? Those are the real, I mean, let's face it, this is going to be hard, right? Hybrid is going to be hard. Um, and. Our customers are saying, we need someone that can be that transformation partner, help build my own journey, do it my own unique way. Um, I need someone that understands maybe the financial implications of it and actually can help me build a business model around it. So it's it's much deeper than just, um, you know, is it the right server or is it the right storage for that? There's a, a lot of other things involved. And I think our role in all of that is is to play that strategic role for that customer, that we we've been there, right? We understand where they are today we can help you build that bridge going forward. Um, and it, it's more than just technology. You know, it's more than hardware, it's, it's software, it's services, it's financial capital and financial flexibility, um, and it's business enablement. And if you take the combination of enterprise services, HP software's assets, uh, the enterprise group's hardware, um, the vast experience that we have, the financial services, you put that package together, you give it focus, right? I mean, I think it's tremendous, uh, the role that we're going to play, and it's, it's it's rather unique um, in the industry. There's no one else that's really bringing those things together in, in that way. And with Go ahead. Jason, t um, we're, <clears throat> we're here live about the, the keynotes coming, people are watching. Yeah. Give us a teaser of the, of the, of the show theme. I mean, HP Discover always has a great cadence to it. Yep. Um, great customer vibe here. Yep. Every, in the past years, it's always had the spring to its step. It's where all the employees and customers are coming. Biggest spring, biggest spring in the step that I've ever seen at Discover. Um, Lay out the pillars. What is the theme of the show for the folks that aren't here that well, they're watching? Well, I think, I think one of the big things about what is the news, the story of, of you know, Discover 2015, um, you're, you're, it's really the first time that the public's going to start to get a, a real glimpse at what Hewlett Packard Enterprise is going to be about. Meg's going to spend a lot of time talking about the future of Hewlett Packard Enterprise, um, what our what our role is in the world, the, the where we're going to play, um, what we're going to stand for, um, and, and you know you're going to see things like the brand being expressed around the around here. Um, so you're starting to see that transformation happen, um, and over, it's going to start accelerating over the next few months. But you'll start to get a sense of that story. Um, what Meg's going to talk about is. Um, she said that one of the advantages of the split is the increased focus that we're able to have as a company. And I, I've, I've definitely seen that. There's been an, an energy in the, the two different groups getting much more focused on, look, we, you, know, you have your customers and yeah. we have our customers, and I can now just focus on the things that I really know need to go get done with my customers, and you guys can do the same. And it, I think it's really given a, a big energy. And our, um, you know, we talked about HP's unique role or Hewlett Packard's unique role in this is going to be um, that, that transformation partner. And so um, we recognize we can't continue to come to customers with you know, a server or a storage or whatever to be, that's not, that's not transformation, so that's technology. So categorically, hybrid cloud, hybrid so infrastructure? So four things, okay. so four areas of focus. Transforming to hybrid infrastructure. Why do we need that? Because the nature of apps are changing, right? Different breed of applications coming. Um, I need apps for the Internet of Things, I need mobile apps, I need web, I need traditional, and I need to bring those together right, in a consistent, integrated, governed way. Um, second, uh, I need to think about protecting the digital enterprise. Very different sort of notion around risk. It's more than just security. It's more than just perimeter breaches, it's right? It's complicated. It's, it's a lot of moving parts. Well, a lot of moving parts. I mean, there's risk in all its forms. We've got to take a different stance towards risk, a much more sort of lean forward, proactive stance towards it. Um, and uh, we need to accept some things like breaches are going to happen. We, can't, we can no longer think in this digital world we're going to stop breaches. Yeah. So when they happen, how can we find out quickly? How can we um, make sure that the, you know, there's, there's uh, not much damage done, et cetera? 
So um, protecting the digital enterprise is a huge area of focus huge. for us. Yeah, that's huge. I would um, think that's And massive. again, these are all things that we're hearing from our customers. They're saying, this is my challenge. I don't, I don't just need a better yeah. piece of hardware. That's not yeah. my biggest problem in the world, right? Is I don't want to destroy my brand or have my brand destroyed by yeah. a well-funded, you know, uh, group of uh, hackers, right? Yeah. That are coming in and, and doing especially with harm. the perimeterless security model that opens up, and with the API economy, all these these new transformative, yes. transformative trends yes. with technologies, the integrated stack, yep. some people call it, really teases out the model of the future, yep. which is integrated solutions. And again, you put together, you know, the security intelligence, the expertise that we have. The, I mean, we've. We do this stuff with thousands of clients every day. Um, the portfolio of assets that we've been developing yeah. over the last years, old school Atala encryption, right? Stuff that you know is born out of you know some of our most mission critical technologies. Bring that together in the modern world, and yeah. suddenly we've got a, one of the most powerful encryption technologies out there today. So, it's all of those elements: it's hardware, it's software, it's services. So that's second area transformation. Um, third is um, uh, uh, we need to do a much better job of empowering a data-driven organization. You know, today, I mean, obviously data is always at the center of every business, but being data-driven is kind of a different idea. And um, one of the areas that we're especially focused on is a lot of customers have taken that, and you guys have written a lot about this, talked a lot about this, but they've taken their first steps into Hadoop, um, and the return on investment that they expected is a lot less than what they're actually seeing, right? And so they've got this massive data lake, I built the big Hadoop thing, now what, right? And um, there's still, I think, a lot of other vendors that are out there um, with kind of Big. It's early days. It is it's, still early days, but, but real time is relevant. I mean, this well, idea concept is about it, exactly, started. and that's uh, that's our point. Is that you know, this isn't some sort of big future, long journey thing? There is actionable um, questions that we could be asking of our data today and getting answers on, and putting analytics to work in very practical, simple ways, yeah. and you know, um, out of that, and, and and that's one of the areas that um, I think we're really going to shine as you bring together the Hadoop, uh, the the Haven platform around, say Hadoop plus our you know, big data services capabilities. And I mean, we can start yeah. generating business outcomes and, and, and value right now. We don't, it's not a, you know, sort of a, a long-term feature thing that we have to do. So, um, you know, you know Colin are, Mahoney called that three years ago. Yeah. He said Hadoop's going to be very relevant. Yes. But it's not a one-trick pony, it's not a silver bullet. Well, it, it needs all the value that wraps yeah, around it. Um, <laughs> you know, so I mentioned encryption. You know, you Same cut thing. this massive amount of data, yeah. a lot of it's very valuable. You know, you yeah. want to encrypt all of that data, right? Um, that's not an easy thing to do yeah, yeah. today. So um, anyway, so that's um, three. so that's number three. And then number four is uh, that we're hearing from customers is they want to um, enable uh, uh, workforce productivity, but what they're talking about is the digital workplace, right? And the digital workplace is everywhere. It's not just about employees with laptops and, and mobile devices. It's about engaging customers at the moment of need. Right, so it's empowering employees yeah. and engaging customers. So they need the tools, which is devices. They need a security model that works for it. Right? Well, the way I we mean, look at it, yeah. I mean, the, but the way we look at that is, it's actually all about the experience. Yeah, so you take totally. the app, you take the data, you secure it. All of that hard work falls falls to the wayside if you fail at that last mile of the experience. Right. Yeah. So how do we ensure a high quality experience? Whether it's the engagement from the application, it's the right data delivered <coughs> at the right time, it's the um, it's just the quality of the connection and the basic plumbing of the whole thing, right? We were talking yeah. about you know all these concurrent live streams and how you know complicated that is. Flash mob videos and you know is, do I even have an infrastructure that's ready for that? So um, this fourth one is is uh, is last because it's probably the most important. Yeah. I think you know, we're moving into an experience-driven world, and yeah. the yeah. digital workplace is going to demand a new set of experiences um, yeah. that enable and empower customers yeah. and employees in ways that we really haven't and conceived. The and the fourth is the connection to the business model. So you got. Transforming the hybrid infrastructure, protecting the, the, the digital assets, that's a whole risk. The whole portfolio. digital enterprise. Digital enterprise. Empowering the data-driven organization and enabling workplace productivity. So how should we think about these capabilities in each of those? You're, you're sort of transforming your own organization from a product-centric to yep. sort of this capability-centric. Yeah. Um, you want to go back around sort of the... the yeah, <laughs> let's, 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 let's pick So like transform, you know, I think, uh, the, the big the big area that we're going to play in transforming the hybrid infrastructure, maybe not be necessarily intuitive to you, but I kind of mentioned earlier is apps, uh, applications. Yeah, yeah, that's app-driven, app right. Um, that really is our strength. We build great hardware, don't get me wrong, but our, you know, I think sometimes underappreciated, we have tremendous capabilities and thousands of specialists who's, they know how to get the most out of an app. They know how to, they know how to build that infrastructure to get the most out of it, and then you combine that with, um, our, our um, uh, folks in, in, in the enterprise uh, services group, 
their ability to then develop and translate that application into uh, uh, and align it to business process, right, into business outcome, those, that combination means we can help you bring an idea into an app, into production, into value, into outcome, faster than anybody else in the industry. And, and you talked about the bridge earlier. Right. 90% of the, the revenue is probably coming from those legacy applications, but everybody's trying to get to the new stuff. How do I present Correct. the legacy apps with a, through a prism of, right. of the new stuff? That's right. complicated and that's and the way that we're going to approach the thought. The only reason to go to a hybrid infrastructure is because of you know, the, the, the diversity and this new breed of applications that are coming. I mean, if, if apps weren't changing, we don't need to change our infrastructure. We're fine the way we are, but that's not the reality. Yeah. You know, 2020, we estimate something like, um, you know, what is it, uh, 7.6 billion people, 100 million connected devices, or billion connected devices, a trillion applications, right? One size isn't going to fit all, right? Yeah. And I've got all these issues and questions of integration and governance and compliance and protection and um, different needs for cost and speed and scale across those applications. So I really need a solution for my app environment that are in today and tomorrow. I think that's the key, the solution's the key. So like we've been, again, over the past three years, mentioned Colin, calling that <coughs> dupe call, which yep. is obviously used right close to the action. You've seen the different buzzwords come and go, whatever people call, oh, the workload, workload, and it's all relevant, I mean, but it's starting, it's all vectoring on the same path, which is the user environment of productivity sets the pace because that's the driver of the car, if you will. There's some instrumentation on the panel, but there's an engine. So you got to have the tooling for the right. user. But at the end of the day, the engine of innovation is still a storage. It's still the same stuff. Right. You know, Larry Ellison said, hey, you know, it's all that same. It's still the data center. Someone has to have a data center. Data centers aren't going away. So right. the whole cloud concept. So Infrastructure's not going away. It's just changing. So the user experience is about notifications. So there's some things happening at the edge of the network. And then you add on Internet of Things. So that, I think, is pretty much a done deal. People see that clearly. So, but your customers are telling you, what? What are your top customers, what are your customers telling HP? You know, obviously, the four pillars, right? You want hardware that works for that. Yeah, they're telling, that, yeah, they're saying, hey, we got a new breed of apps, I need a new type of infrastructure to deal with it. They're saying, I'm dealing with threats that I never conceived of before. Um, firewalls and hardened perimeters aren't going to do it for right. me anymore. How can I use analytics um, to uh, predict when those things might happen? We're hearing, um, you, know, from, uh, you know, from the data, well, we heard it loud and clear, hey, Hadoop round one, not so good. How can you help me with round yeah, two, right? Yeah. Real time um, stuff like in-memory yeah, databases. And my workplace, I mean, you think I, and we, we all probably travel a lot. I mean, yeah. you know, the digital workplace of the airport, right? Yeah. It's like three employees there in, in 500 kiosks, right? That's a different type of workplace that has to be enabled. It's a different type of app and workload. Um, there's transactions that are happening there. Customer satisfaction is key if that thing doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they I can't don't like buy that. it from one so, vendor. It used to be, hey, I'm going to buy that security from that company, yeah. I'm going to buy some storage from here. Right. It's all interconnected now. Yeah, exactly, that's my point, is that you know, that's what the customers are asking for, is how do I transform and, and do those different things? And it's not just a random act of mobility, it's not putting a new Wi-Fi node in, it's not going to yeah. deliver the business outcome that, you, that you're looking for. So, Yeah, and they don't want to spend time doing all this heavy lifting. No. They want to spend time taking the ideas, combining them with, uh, other right. ideas right. And, and adding value. And I think that's, as the, as, this, as the transformation partner for this for the digital world, I think yeah. that's what HP is going to stand for, is we recognize that you have great ideas and our job is to help you unleash the value and the outcome of that idea, whether that idea is expressed in an application, how can I empower your developers to create it, how can I deliver an operation environment that streamlines the delivery of that, how can I secure that application, how can I deliver that app to the end user in a, in a, in a high quality, high experience type of way, right? Um, so getting value, going from time to value from idea to outcome is, is really what we're going to be all about. So you're excited? Very excited. So what gives you confidence that HP is going to drive this future? Um, you know, legacy, the people that, the, the culture, the people that we work with here. Um, you know, I think this is, I think we're really getting back to our roots. Um, I think that the split gives us a lot more focus so that we know uh, who we are and what we stand for in the marketplace. Um, it, you know, it obviously enables us to make um, uh, some more focused investments, whether it be in services or, or hardware. I think Aruba is a, you know, talk about world leaders in delivering user experience. Aruba has, has really been on the, the front edge of that. Now they're part of the family. So, um, you know, all of the right moves, all of the right direction. And I think you're going to see it the, this week, the, the spring and the step of HP, uh, particularly the Hewlett Packard enterprise side of the house. Um, very excited about the four transformation areas. And I think that's going to be, you know, the big buzz and the big story because um, customers are going to see it. It's, it's a different story. It's an execution I mean, story. I mean, you guys, how many times have you been to Discover? Let's start six Discover. Okay, this will be the first time that um, we don't go on the main stage as business unit silos. 
right? All the leaders of the business are going to come together and they're going to tell a customer in story about the things that customers care about, they've told us that they want to hear from us, and we're going to bring the full power of our hardware, software, and services together into one story. And it's extremely compelling. I mean, so it's about the customer, basically. It's all about the customer. It's not a product prism. I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a marketing guy, right? So it all, that's where yeah. it all starts. Um, it's well, that's the danger when you get siloed kind of right. like presentations, left hand, right hand, that's know exactly they're talking right. to each other. And this, yeah. I think, you know, as we progress towards splitting to Hewlett Packard Enterprise, it, uh, it's given us that focus to get back to the roots of those types of things. And um, I'm, I'm telling you, Meg's really excited about. It. She's been she's been given the story to you know, given the new pitch of the new company to the. Um, so our top customers getting tremendous yeah. feedback. You're just yeah. going to see a different energy and in the there, branding, a different approach. The new yeah, branding I mean, they're showcasing here too, right? Like <laughs> I said, yeah, if you'd have been here, any other Discover the past five, six yeah. years, it would have been hardware guy leader gets up, you know, the service leader gets up and gives their pitch, and yeah. um, it's a totally different uh, story. I mean, and it, uh, it's uh, it's extremely compelling, and I've it's always uh, different in the HP, industry, I think. I've always said HP has the customers. Yeah. They have big customers with big needs. And they yeah. give feedback. I mean, HP right. listens. So I mean, historically, you guys have done a great job with that. So you know, that's one thing about HP Discover that impressed me um, is that customers are here, right? Big time. Yeah. It's not like it's they're mailing it in. Either, well, you know? yeah. Like, I mean, it, and it's it, it's the real deal. Well, exactly. I mean, these are and all of these things are, you know, we spin them as marketing, and it's easy to to talk about. But these are hard things to go do, and our customers are looking for someone that. I mean, let's face it. Uh, you know, how many of them go through any particular project more than once? Well, with our you know, services arm, we see it 40,000 times. There's a couple yeah. of learnings in there, right, that we can share, <laughs> right? And um, I think we're getting much more focused on, hey, we do know a lot. I All mean, right. how many millions of servers are out there? How many different millions of you know, uh, server events have we seen? What can we learn yeah. from that and, and enable our customers to learn from that? We have all the tools, all and the products And that's what we're bringing, there. that's what these transformation areas are now enabling us to bring forward so that, you know, in fact, what you'll hear in, in the, the, the main stage keynote later today is, a lot of those learnings coming forward, kind of le you know leading with with um, with that insight of what we've what we've uncovered and and helping other customers on these transformation journeys um, where to get started, and that's the way that we're going to be engaging our customers going forward as well. Um, not right. just hey, you know here's a new server, do you want to buy some? Right. Jason, thanks for previewing. We appreciate you coming out and giving a little teaser sure. on the keynote, Meg Whitman's keynote. Join the conversation, go to hpdiscover.social, go to hp.com, join the conversation on Twitter, hpdiscover hashtag, or go to crowdchat.net slash hp. There's a zillion places to touch the conversation. Come join it, create a conversation, get your, your peers, and watch the keynotes. This is theCUBE, live in Las Vegas for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We're here for six years. We've been on the ground. We've been seeing this unfold in front of us. We've been like documenting the story, Dave. So we're we're going to bring you all the action. Stay tuned to theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>